Bigby, age nine. Oni, age six. Daniel, age six. Sandy, age one and a half. Long Jack, age 60. Lucinda, age two. Anna, age four. Ben, age 57. Carter, age 40. Lawrence, age 14. Molly, age 45. Priscilla, age 36. Simon, age 20. Judy, age 50. Charity, age 42. Lenny, age 27. Sarah, age 20. Sophia, age 14. Agnes, age 25. Saul, age 38. Savory, age 13. Abby, age 10. Hannah, age 4. Roger, age 10. Fendel, age 2. Simon, age 20. Agnes, age 25. Peg, age 30. Grace, age 35. Saul Twine, age 38. Lucy, age 50. Ben, age 57. Sue, age, listed as past labor. George, age one. Matilda, age one. Sandy, age one. Penny, age 11. Sophia, age 14. Betty, age 16. Martin, age one. Adam, age seven. Sis, age eight. George, age eight. Cecilia, age two. Suki Bay, age 46. Lucy, age 18. Saul, age 30. Penny, age 20. Hannah, age 12. Uriah, age 24. Gabriel, age 30. Darkus, age 36. Saki, age 40. Davy, age 56. Will, age 60. Molly, age 76. Kate, listed as old. Nanny, listed as old. Martin, age one. Urena, age two. Diana, age eight. Alcee, age eight. Nancy, age two. Lucy, age 11. Diana, age eight. Alexander, age three. Darkus, age one. Peg, age 34. Alcee, age 38. Nancy, age 28. Amy, age 30. Molly, age 26. Letty, age 14. Kate, age 18. Isabel, age 16. Towson, age 14. Davy, age 56. James, age 7. Urena, age 2. Henry, age 1. Rainy, age 2. Billy, age 2. Miley, age one, Patience, age 14, Robin, age 80, Oliver, age 11. Daniel, age 15, Nancy, age 11, Dennis, age 5, Henry, age 11, George, age 40, Harry, age 40. Dundee, age 40. Botswain, age 40. 
Charles, age 40. Ben, age 40. Joe, age 40. Moses, age 40. Davy, age 40. Tom, age 40. Jacob, age 40. Alice, age 8. Nancy, age 2. Lucy, age 11. Diana, age 8. Alexander, age 3. Darkus, age 1. Peg, age 34. Alice, age 38. Nancy, age 28. Amy, age 30. Abram, Ambrose, Augusta, Betty, Bob, Briny, Daniel, Daphne, Delia, Grace, Hannah, Isaac, Rack, James, Judy, Julius, Maria, Matilda.
Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful morning. My name is Sheila Coates, and I'm here this morning to just say, oh, the Spirit is with us. You feel the Spirit is with us. And the purpose and why we are here to honor the enslaved and to remember why we are here. Many of you should have the names of an enslaved person here do you, everyone have that card, the name of someone? If not, would you raise your hand? Okay, otherwise everybody does, everyone. We ask that you take the spirit of that person who lies on this hollow ground and remember them as you lay your wreath today. So to shorten my, um, I have a person that's here that looks at me and timing me. So I would like to introduce to you the young lady who has worked so diligently with her team to present this morning. Barika Porter, and she will be your mistress of ceremony, among other things. And she also, okay, did I follow the script okay? I don't know, did I? Yes, she followed the script okay. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Barika Porter, and I'm happy to be here with you all today. Um, we are going to open up our ceremony today with Dr. Doug Bradburn, who's gonna bring us some remarks. And then um, we will come back and have a welcome, official welcome from Black Women United for Action.
Thank you, Sheila and Barika. Thank you very much. Good morning. I'm Doug Bradburn, President and CEO here, and I'm delighted on behalf of the Mount Vernon Ladies Association to welcome you to the annual commemoration of the Slave Cemetery and Memorial. It's lovely to hear, see you all here in this special place. Last year, we had to do it virtually, and we're delighted to be that we can be together in this challenging time. Now, the Mount Vernon Ladies Association preserved Mount Vernon, this place, so that they could teach stories to help us understand who we are as a people. Those stories must include the stories of the people enslaved here. And we have dedicated ourselves to try to understand their individuality, their humanity, their lives, even in the face of the cruel injustice of slavery. Thank you. I'm proud to say that we teach teachers all over the country how to teach this subject. As, as many as we can every year, we provide all our materials for free. Our research is ongoing about the lives of those entwined, bound and enslaved by the Washingtons, by George and Martha Washington, here at Mount Vernon, and in other places across Virginia. Their skills and their fortitude, the talents of the enslaved are all around us here. The beautiful views of this estate were carved out by enslaved hands and work. The beautiful woodwork and the shape of the buildings was put together by enslaved craftsmen and women. The work of the blacksmiths, the work of so much you see here is the work of enslaved people. The mansion itself, this iconic symbol of America was built by enslaved hands, and it's preserved here. And we can all see the things of beauty that were created even in the midst of the misery of slavery. But we appreciate their work as remnants of the powerful influence on all of our lives. I'm optimistic myself that the truth about our past helps us reconcile with the challenges of the present. We all have to work together to take on some big issues in this world. That's the nature of the challenge of being a self-governed people. That is the legacy. On the one hand of George Washington, left us the values and the opportunities of a free country. On the other hand, left us work to be done. Left us work to be done to make this country more equitable, more just, and a more perfect union together. And to do that, we must understand all of our past and all the lives particularly those here at Mount Vernon that we stand upon today. So we follow the truth here at Mount Vernon. We walk humbly in that, and we follow it wherever it may lead. So I'm delighted this morning we can spend some time in celebration and remembrance of lives that are often forgotten and often only dimly glimpsed. Thank you very much for being here. I want to thank Sheila Coates for your tremendous leadership. Mount Vernon has a partnership with Sheila for over 30 years. And the Black Women United for Action, many of whom are here today, see Valerie Jackson and others. Sheila and that group is a powerful force for good in the world, and I'm honored to know her and work with her and call her my friend. And we've got exciting things coming as well, Sheila knows. We've got some exciting things that hopefully we'll be able to announce next year at this event. And I also want to commend, uh, there's so many involved that make this happen, but I want to commend Barika Porter who is extraordinary in what she's been able to do here, making this ceremony happen in all this pandemic time. Thank you for your efforts, your hard work. Our team is delighted to work with you and continue this partnership. Now, I encourage you all to come back to Mount Vernon when you have more time. Learn about the latest preservation work, the latest archaeological work, our most recent education efforts. Make this place your own, as it is for all Americans, to understand the foundations we are standing on. Thank you very much. Thank you, Doug, for those words. Um, I just want to start by just saying welcome, everyone. I thank you all for coming. Again, my name is Barika Porter, and I'm with Black Women United for Action. I'm honored to be standing here with you all today. As you all see in your program, our theme today is resilience, and we are highlighting the Gum Springs community, which was started by Wes Ford, who worked here on this plantation, and his descendants went on to build a thriving community. And I think it really speaks to the power of resilience and the importance of resilience in a people. 
And so as we sit here today, we have the names of those that were enslaved. Take time to think about those names and what they had to endure so that we can sit here today. The opportunity to build resilience is solely based on three things that the monument actually symbolizes, faith, hope, and love. And we know that faith is the evidence of things hoped for and the substance of things not seen. Can you imagine what the people who worked here are thinking or were thinking or would have thought about seeing all of us sitting here today? remembering and acknowledging the very many sacrifices. I'm sure there were days where they didn't feel like being resilient, but they made a choice to live. And as a result, we get to choose to live and we get to choose how we're going to live. We get to choose whether we're gonna live with hope or fear. We're at a critical time in our nation's history. We're literally standing at a crossroad where we can let fear and doubt and anxiety take us over or we can tap back into the things that brought the people who lived here that many of us have descended from to carry us forward. We can choose to love. You get to decide what love looks like. Is love kind? Is love patient? Does love bear all things? I would say yes. Hope, hope is what gives us the opportunity to go on one more day. That is what builds resilience, hoping for what you don't see right now, knowing that it's coming. Knowing that it's coming. People worked and never saw freedom in sight, but they held on to hope. They held on to belief. They instilled faith into their children and their children's children and their children's children. You all are evidence of that faith and hope and love. Those of you sitting here today, it's not by chance. This is your charge to go ahead and continue to facilitate and foster resilience in your own lives. We thank you for coming and taking part of this ceremony today. We welcome you. We just ask that you sit back and be reflective and proceed in the spirit of remembrance in solemn gratitude to those that lay amongst us. If you look around, you see all the flowers on the graves. Those are some of the graves that they've uncovered. We're honoring the families that we know about, but we're also honoring those that we don't know the names of. So at this time, I'm going to ask missionary Janae Roscoe to come up and lead us in our invocation. Thank you for your time today. This honored tradition awakens our hearts and minds to draw near in remembrance and reflection in solidarity with the ancestors who were resilient with faith, hope, and love. We commence in communion with the elders who forged the path forward and showed the way of resilience in the strange and faraway land from home. We take time to honor the lives of life well spent. And in, in this new found land, well spent, for they courageously bustled in fruitfulness, multiplying in this strange land. A land they made home. Today, we commune with the ancestors 
this treasured festival of remembrance. Like living stones gathered on holy grounds in solidarity as the true Ebenezer of all leads our ceremonial reflection and dance, rejoice, celebration. We gather to express thanksgiving for their fortitude and usher reverent remembrance and recognition of their lives well lived. They breathed and lived a life, a praise offering to the Almighty with the audacity to conquer with legacy of life and living before an almighty God. We connect this day with stones left as markers for our remembrance to proclaim their life. The ancestors lived on soil in sweet in sweat and with tears and joy. We gather as living stones to submit our alignment with the forebearers of hue, tone, and grit, singing a beautiful, oh say can you see the dawns of early light, proudly hailing their own sweet liberty. Today, we've come with voices present before the almighty present one, honoring those created by creator our huge ancestors connecting in this homecoming, cheering us on to carry on. I believe even the acorns fall with their own hallelujah and the bristling wind and the breeze chanting through the trees. They are cheering us on, connecting in this homecoming. This invocation ushers our ceremonial celebration in reverence to the Ebenezer, in honor of our ancestors we recognize and love. We are gathered with breath. Praise ye the Lord in this here homecoming. The ancestors welcome our communion, connecting with rejoice. We are more than project or property or race theory. But as people, we commune, connect, we come home. We've come to honor our people who share time in this space, here in Mount Vernon, down by the riverside, where George and Martha Washington and Ken called to home. The Black Women United for Action and the Mount Vernon Ladies Society proceed in the 31st Slave Memorial Reef Lane Ceremony. We've gathered in a sweet liberty. We've gathered in sweet liberty as a hallelujah to their cries, tears, and yes, their joys. In recognition of their lives lived, they are a twilight still gleaming strong. At this time, Virginia State will lead us in Lift Every Voice and Sing. If you're able to stand, we ask that you join us. Ah. 
Thank you for that. That was lovely. While um, Miss Val Valerie Jackson makes her way to the podium, I just would like to highlight why we're so grateful for having Virginia State University here today. We were planning on a smaller event, much smaller. <laughs> we were going to just live stream like we did last year. And Mr. Patrick reached out to us and said that he really would like to bring the students to come because he remembers a time when he actually was here in the choir singing at this event and found it to be such an important moment for him and so he said we're coming so we are so glad that they were able to come I know students y'all have lots of work to do and so you're missing a whole day of doing your homework so we're so glad that you guys are here um, and we thank you for your beautiful singing and at this time Miss Valerie is going to come forth Good morning, everyone. Whoa. <laughs> I'm Valerie Jackson, Vice President of Black Women United for Action. And I have the distinct honor to introduce our reef layers for this year. We have three wonderful uh, guests that we've invited to do so. And they're going to share with you a few comments after I speak. Our first most esteemed guest is Miss Ida Singletary. It's right here. She is 101 years old, as of March 22nd of this year. Miss Ada. Miss Ada, not Miss Ida, Miss Ada. I stand corrected. Miss Ada is a lifelong resident of Gum Springs. She was born, raised, and she continues to live there. Uh, her legacy lives on in Gum Springs, and I am sure if we can get her to say a few words, she'll have some really interesting comments for us. We then have Mr. Ron Chase. Mr. Ron Chase is here. Would you raise your hand, Mr. Chase? He's a resident of the Gum Springs community, and he serves as the president and CEO of the Gum Springs uh, Historical Society, and he's, a, he's an activist within the community. Um, Mr. Chase comes to us also. He'll make comments and share some of his thoughts on Gum Spring, which is the oldest African-American uh, community uh -huh. in Virginia, founded in 1833. Then we have Ms. Linda Allen Hollis, who is an author, historian, and biographer, who has spent many years researching Wes Ford. Wes Ford lived here at Mount Vernon when he was enslaved, and also he's one of the founders of Gum Springs. Uh, she has a very interesting book. She's done a lot of research uh, and articles on Wes Ford. Ms. Allen, would you please raise your hand? And we're very lucky and happy to have her here today. I'm going to keep this brief. I just want you to know who they are, and they will be participating as the reef layers. They will be laying the reef at the Slave Memorial today. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Valerie. At this time, we are going to have um, Linda Hollis to please come so that you can give your remarks. Um, as Ms. Valerie mentioned, she is a descendant of West Ford and has done a lot of research on her family's history. So we are looking forward to hearing from her today. She comes by way of California. So we're glad to have her. First, first I want to give honor to God who makes all things possible. My name is Linda Allen Hollis, and I am a direct descendant of West Ford. Many may not know that West was integral in the management of Mount Vernon, and he did so for close to 60 years. He guarded George Washington's tomb, and he was one of the caretakers of this slave cemetery. Before speaking about him, I want to thank the Black Women United for Action for giving me the opportunity to talk today and for their diligent work in making this commemoration 
a successful yearly process. I also want to thank the Mount Vernon staff for continuing to work with the families of, of the slave descendants through the League of Descendants of the Enslaved at Mount Vernon. And lastly, I want to thank two key people. First, Ron Chase, who has kept West Ford's legacy alive through the Gum Springs Museum for over 30 years. And to my cousin, the late Judith, Dr. Judith Saunders Burton, who worked tirelessly on having a permanent marker placed at this burial site. I stand on her shoulders today because of all of her efforts. The Mount Vernon Slave Cemetery holds a special place in my family as it is a part of our history. I too felt that realization of our heritage as my family and I walked these grounds yesterday. My great grandfather, Major George Ford, was born and raised on the then Mount Vernon Plantation, visited this slave cemetery in 1929 with his son, Bruce. When they arrived, they found two men working in this cemetery, a Wilfred Nitzi and an Artie Pettit. They were hauling away the debris, and some of that debris contained tombstones and markers. When my grandfather asked with some concern, what are you going to do with those stones? Are you going to bring them back? The two men replied that they were told to get rid of them. They also said that they were placing a stone tablet in the center of the cemetery designating this area. I would like to say that removing those markers deprived the slaves of their individuality, of their burial. To be forgotten like an old barn or a house that was torn down. And with time, no one would ever know that anything had been erected here. You can understand my great-grandfather's despair because some of the markers contained the names of his family members his great-great-grandmother, Jenny, his grandmother, Venus, his grand-aunt, Betty, his grandparents, West and Priscilla Ford, and his parents, William, his father, and Henrietta, his mother, all buried in the slave cemetery, their graves no longer noted. The Mount Vernon Slave Cemetery and West Ford share a sense of identity, even though we don't know exactly where he is buried. And while West Ford gained some prominence at Mount Vernon, he came as a slave in 1805 and was later freed at the age of 21. To commemorate the occasion of Ford's freedom, the Washingtons had an artist come to Mount Vernon to pencil sketch his portrait. We don't know who the artist was, as there, as there are no records available. But what we do know was that Wes was impeccably groomed, and his chestnut-colored hair was pulled back tightly against his head, his blue-gray eyes sparkling at the opportunity to have his picture drawn for his freedom. After gaining his freedom, he later became a landowner in 1829. Wes would go on to manage the estate for decades, gaining the trust of owners Bushrod Washington, John Augustine Washington II, and John Augustine Washington III. He kept the estate records. He wrote letters to the Washingtons. They wrote him back. He purchased and sold items for the estate, and he traveled the countryside when others of his race did not have the freedom to do so. When the Mount Vernon's Ladies Association took over Mount Vernon, West Ford became a valuable resource so that when they were doing the renovation, he was able to tell them exactly how the mansion house looked. West Ford married Priscilla Bell, a free woman, and the ceremony was performed by a Reverend Muir, who was the pastor of the First Presbyterian Church of Alexandria, and it was recorded in the county records. West raised his children 
and his grandchildren all on Mount Vernon, and all of them were educated on the Mount Vernon estate. He died at the age of 79 in July 1863 at Mount Vernon in the mansion house. His obituary appeared in the Alexandria Gazette newspaper. A portion of Westford's land later became a refuge for freed slaves after the Civil War, and the, the enclave was called Gum Springs. Westford was later known as the father of Gum Springs. It could also be stated that Westford is of Washington lineage, and we Fords are confident on who his father is. However, that that determination will be settled by future DNA analysis. West Ford and other African Americans that once belonged to George Washington has a shared story, a shared family portrait from Mount Vernon. I, for one, am looking forward to this estate giving more visibility to West Ford and to renovating and beautifying the slave cemetery for those visitors who may wish to sit a spell and contemplate on the lives of those buried here. Thank you. At this time, we will have a musical selection with um, Angie Barnes and Diana Richardson, if you would please come. Your grace and mercies brought me through living this moment because of you. I want to thank you and praise you too. Your grace and mercy brought me through. We've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trust in his holy word he's never failed me yet singing oh 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 can't turn around we come this far by faith Encourage my soul and let us journey on. Though the night is dark and I am far from home, thanks be to God, the morning light appears. The storm is passing over the storm is passing over the storm is passing over hallelujah 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 oh, 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 oh. the storm is passing over the storm is passing over, the storm is passing over, hallelujah, hallelujah, 
hallelujah, hallelujah. But the storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Angie and Diana. That was beautiful. At this time, we'll have Mr. Ron Chase come forward and bring us some remarks about the Gum Springs community. like to say good morning to everyone. First, giving honor to God, I'd like to say it's indeed a pleasure to be here this morning. It's a pleasure and an honor to stand on this hallowed ground, here where the enslaved gave their faith, their hope, and love in order to survive the injustice of slavery. I stand to recognize my ancestors who labored here where upon attaining their freedom sought refuge in a land that they surely considered a land of milk and honey. This land, this oasis, was a sanctuary called Gum Springs. Gum Springs was a miracle created by an individual who understood the sufferings of his fellow man. He himself at one point was enslaved and manager of the Mount Vernon estate, West Ford. West Ford was someone who commanded position at Mount Vernon. Research connects him directly with the Washington family. In purchasing land and providing this haven for blacks in and of itself was miraculous. It was a miraculous event. A black man purchasing land in 1833 Virginia. The community which formed from this effort showcased the fortitude and the determination of its founder and the families that came to this place of life, creating churches, schools, fraternal organizations, businesses. These were the building blocks of community. The original families of Gum Springs were Griffin Johnson, Reverend Samuel Taylor, Loveless Brown, William Randall, Nathan Webb, Dandridge Smith, Reverend William Triplett, Hamilton Gray, Robert King, Reverend John Winters, William Belfield, Annie Smith, Joseph King, Ben Holland, Saunders Moon, Calvin Ferguson, and many more. Members of these families still reside in Gum Springs today, where the Gum Springs Museum presents their history, the history of a national treasure. Thank you.
Thank you, Ron, for giving us some, some additional background about the Gum Springs community. At this time, uh, Ms. Kim Gordon will come and bring us another selection, and then uh, Virginia State will bring two more selections after her. Thank you. Okay, so this next selection um, is congregational. That means everybody's going to sing with us. <laughs> We're all going to sing together. Is it in dedication to Ms. Ada? And this is in dedication to Miss Ada. All right. <laughs> yes. This is Hold to God's Unchanging Hand. Yeah. <laughs> Time is filled with swift transition. Not on earth unmoved. Not on earth unmoved can stand. Oh, build your hopes on things eternal. Oh, hold to God's changing hand. Oh, you ought to hold to his hand. God's unchanged hand. Oh, build your hopes on things eternal. You ought to hold to God's changing hand. Here's the next verse. Trust in him who will not leave you. Oh, whatsoever years may bring. Oh, if by earthly friends forsaken. Oh, still more closely to him cling. Come on, you know this part. Hold, hold to his hand. Oh, you ought to hold, hold to his hand. Oh, build your hopes on things eternal. You ought to hold to God's unchanging hand. This one more verse here. When your journey is completed, ooh, if to God you have been true, fair and bright your home in glory, your enraptured soul will view. Come on, put your hands together. I think everybody's got it now, right? Right. Hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. You ought to hold. Hold to his hand. Hold. Build your hopes on things eternal. Changing hand. Amen. 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 I'm so proud to see you youngins, you beautiful children, young people. But there is a story to this and extremely proud to say um, 20 years ago, could it have been 15, 20 years ago when you were here as a singer with the student? Okay.
Well, anyway, <laughs> anyway, he felt that this was, as an interim director of the Virginia State University Choir, as a student, he experienced what it, this experience today of coming to be a part of this wreathing ceremony. And he called us up and said, are you doing it this year? Are you having it? And we said, yes, it's going to be a little bit smaller and a little bit more con condensed. And I could hear it in his voice, the disappointment, like. And so the next thing, we're like, come on home, children, so you all can experience what he experienced in today and this morning. So we're looking so forward to you. Thank you. I had to say that. I'm sorry. <laughs>
marching great day. God's gonna build a Zion's walls great day. Great day, the righteous marching great day. God's gonna build a Zion's wall. Thank you very much, Virginia State. That was beautiful. I could hear the sopranos over here. I was like, ooh. With the mask and everything, that is no small feat. Thank you guys so much for what you've offered up today. At this time, I'd like to spend a little time to say thank you. First, I'd like to say thank you to all of our guests that have come today. I'd love to um, get a hand wave if you are a descendant of West Ford, of Gum Springs of the Mount Vernon Plantation Estate. If you're here today, if you don't know, you can wave, wave your hand too. We thank you for coming today. We thank you for just allowing us to honor your ancestors and the people that you call family. We, we don't consider it a small feat to be able to take part in this celebration and honoring and we hope that you are honored and know that we consider you a part of our family in honoring your family, we're honoring ours as well. So we thank you for that. Uh, we would also like to thank Mount Vernon, Doug and Allison and Brenda and Don, and I see some other faces. Susan, thank you guys so much. Jesse, I'm sorry, I see I shouldn't start naming names because then you mess up, but everybody, um, we just thank you all so much for working with us. I know sometimes we probably make you pull your hair out a little bit, but it's always a beautiful event and we are just honored to be here and we thank you for all the work that you all do behind the scenes. I'd like to also thank Black Women United for Action officers. We have Miss Valerie Jackson, Dr. Alada Taylor, Miss Tina Blanchard, Miss Sheila Coates. Without them, we wouldn't be here today. They have definitely labored long and hard. I hear all the stories about late nights and all the things that had to be done so that we're able to step into the program that we have today. They have learned a lot over the years and I thank you, thank you, thank you ladies Woo, for all that you do and the way that you support me. So I thank you. Um, I'd like to also thank our musical guest. I already said Virginia State, thank you. Kim and Angie and Diana, thank you for just saying yes. And they roll with it, y'all. They, they have been, they are creative geniuses and very talented and gifted and used by the Lord. And we thank you for lending your voices today. I thank the wreath layers for, for today, Miss Ada. We are so honored to have you here today. We thank you for all that you've seen in your lifetime. We, we are just grateful that you're here to celebrate with us today. Thank you to your family that brought you here. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ron Chase. I enjoyed coming to the museum and getting a little tour. Y'all, there is a whole historical museum and society at the Gum Springs Community Center. You should go by. There's lots of rich local history there. And Mr. Ron can tell you just about everything you want to know about the Gum Springs community. Miss Linda. Alan Hollis, I think I get the last name mixed up there, but I'm so glad that you were able to make it today. Thank you for sharing more insight on Wes Ford and what his life was like and learning and hearing about your great grandfather. That was news to me. So thank you for sharing that today. Um, we'd also like to highlight Christian Relief um, Services, who's been working with us since about 1990. Um, the founder, Eugene Krizak, um, has passed on but we want to honor him today and his son who's here with us we thank you for coming they have been faithful partners in the gum springs community working silently doing what needed to be done and so we thank you for being here today 
Um, we'd also like to uh, thank Miss Maddie Palmore, Miss Queenie Cox. Um, there were a couple other people that she gave me that I didn't quite write down, but we thank you. I know there's several Miss um, Janae. I keep saying Janae, but you're Janine and they're twins. But thank you all for stepping in and helping today. Um, we also want to highlight uh, Heritage Fellowship Church, who's also been a valued partner. A lot of people that we see here are members there. Um, we also would like to thank Unified Technologies, who or Unified Industries, who opens their office to us, and we're able to get some of the detailed work that we need to get done, done there. So we thank that group and team. And then lastly, I feel like there's somebody I'm forgetting. Well, the main and most important person, I'd like to thank my husband who deals yeah. with me yeah. and my anxiety before this event. Cause I get, and my kids, all my children are here today and I am grateful and thankful that they are here and excited to help support this event. Mr. Coates, I wanna thank you for lending your wife. <laughs> Yeah, 62 years. We thank you for just turning her over and letting her do what she does. Um, we thank you all for coming today. I think I've covered everyone. Oh, Valina, thank you. She's behind the scenes. Tanya, uh, Fiona, who couldn't be here today, they jump in and they really help keep me straight. Um, and I think, I think that's it, y'all. I thank you so much for coming today. At this time, Dr. Alada Taylor will come forward and... Uh, prepare for the wreath laying. We also want to highlight some of our faith communities. Uh, Bethlehem Baptist Church was one of the earliest faith communities in Gum Springs, followed by Woodlawn Methodist. And we are honored to have a representative from Woodlawn United Methodist, Reverend um, Valina, uh, Vernell Carter, I'm sorry. And we're going to have her come up so that she can actually do the closing prayer. Okay. So while she comes. I can't read lips. I'm sorry. They're trying to tell me something and I can't understand. So we're going to have Reverend uh, Carter come and lead us in our closing prayer and then we will transition into the wreath laying. Thank you. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, tears, thou who has brought us thus far along the way, thou who has by thy might led us into the light. Give oh, us into the light. Keep us forever in thy path, we pray. Lord, you have brought us together to this place, to this occasion, and we give you thanks for that. And, and as we go our separate ways, may the love of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with each of us until we meet again. In God's name we pray and give thanks. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the opportunity for everyone to now participate in honoring the enslaved that served here at Mount Vernon. We'll start off with our reef layers, Ms. Ida, Mr. Ms. Ada Singletary, Mr. Chase, and Ms. Hollis. We, we, we then invite all of you here to have your sprig. You'll lay it at the base here, following them, you'll come around to the right and go out. Thank you so much again for being here. Yeah, they have. Miss, Miss Ada, first. Oh, freedom. Oh, I'll be buried in my 
my grave and on to my Lord and me free. Okay, uh, I understand we're going to ask Miss Ada to provide a few words. Miss Miss Coates would like for you to. Uh, we're going to give you a mic. You don't have to. They're going to bring you a mic. Yes, that's good. <laughs> First, 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 I want, first, I want to say hello to everyone, and I want, I want to thank the, the young lady that sung my song. <laughs> oh, and and I'm so thankful and blessed to be here. I think this is my second uh, concert I've been to down here, and uh, this is my second home. Because I used to come down here and play on this ground. I lived to, used to live to, uh, two miles from Mount Vernon. And I could walk to Mount Vernon and back home at that time. So I'm so blessed and glad to be here. And I hope everyone will just love each other. Have the faith and the hope. And I bless you all. Okay, Robert. With the, with the honor of the Ruth Lair. You want to all stand? And now we'll start in the we'll start here and come around. You'll lay your sprig at the base and come to the If you have an ancestor, please say the name when you drop the sprig. 